My name is Tom McGill, uh, and I'm the co-founder and current artistic director of the Educational Shakespeare Company. Uh, ESC is 10 years old. Uh, it's an educational charity offering accredited <laughs> training to marginalized groups, including, including prisoners and ex-prisoners, uh, through drama and film. Next slide. Reading Antonio Gramsci gives me hope. He was an optimist. An optimist who used his intelligence and creativity to defeat an oppressive fascist system that tried but failed to imprison his thought. I think we can learn much from Antonio Gramsci today. Next slide. I'm an ex-prisoner who transformed my own life through arts education. I now share that with prisoners and ex-prisoners to enable them to do the same thing. I also know from first-hand experience of the waste of creative potential in our prisons today. And I want to do something to unlock that. But I didn't always think that way. Uh, the infinity of traces that Gramsci talks about within the historical processes that had deposited in me included racism, sexism, but most of all, sectarianism. <coughs> Next slide. My job as a young prisoner in Bedford Prison was to collect the empty food trays from the cells on my landing. My cell was next to an IRA hunger striker, so I had a dilemma. Should I stab him? Or should I scold him? Next slide. When I did meet him, I had a shock. He weighed five stones. He was a child in a man's clothes. My hatred turned into compassion. Starving himself to death, yet still mentoring me with good advice. Educate yourself. Learn about your culture. Don't waste your life in here. I listened to Frank Stagg. Next slide. I went to the prison library, the cell on B3 landing. I read The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck and I wept at the humanity in that book. I moved to a YP jail pursued my interest in arts education. I read Shakespeare's Othello. You give me a headache. <laughs> but it started a fascination with Shakespeare. Next slide. <laughs> At university I learned that drama and theatre and, and particularly Shakespeare have been appropriated by the rich and powerful for their entertainment. <laughs> this is drama for domestication. My class background and prison experience didn't fit with this new world. I felt like an outsider. I knew the power of the arts through my own personal transformation in prison. I knew that there had to be more to the arts than this. I wanted to make a difference, but I didn't know how. Next slide. <coughs> Paulo Freire talks about education that is founded on reproducing the existing political and economic order as education for domestication. Here the learner is conditioned into a structure based on oppressive relations of domination and subordination. Education which domesticates and aims to deny people the right to name their world. Freire describes, refers to this process as the banking concept of education. In banking or domesticating education people are treated as objects empty vessels for authoritarian people to deposit their knowledge in. This was my experience of education until I found Augusta Boal in the Theatre of the Oppressed. Next slide. We started with Jess, Trevor Hummer, and uh, Trevor Hummer here, and Trevor Hummer. Uh, Where I came from, it was like the norm. Every, nearly everybody I knew was in prison at one stage. Been for six months or six years. Somebody was in prison, belonged to their families, anyway. Stabbed the hands, 
the arm broke up, the arm shot in the head, or shot in the knee. When I was 13 years of age, I was in a severe accident, a, a bomb, and I watched my cousin burn alive and had severe burns inflicted on myself, along with some Mario lad who was 9 years of age. He was, my cousin was 14, he died the next day. I was 13, and the Orion lad was 9 years of age, and that just turned me cold against paramovism. And a spike drove through my arm on my wrist, a spike drove through my leg. Once you get a record and if you come from the west, Belfast, didn't the shed was uh, I had to learn how to walk again though. My whole ankles were all smashed. It's a badge, it's stuck on you. Or any of the paper sticks, paper hammers. How many years have you spent in prison? It's up to nine and then no more. It's about 19 and a half, about 19. Next slide. <coughs> Sometimes violence is the only language that the state understands. In 1995, I met my former enemies again when I worked as a drama facilitator in Long Kesh with 10 IRA prisoners on Bobby Sands' epic poem, The Crime of Castle Rain. We adapted it into a 90-minute stage play using many techniques from Boal, including image theatre and forum theatre. Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed was an educational bible in the H blocks. So the fit with Boal was an easy step. The men told their side of the story in their own terms and in their own way. The press called the play propaganda. The men involved in it called it our culture told in our own terms. Freire illuminates the relationship between knowledge, authority and powering in naming the world through the word. Giving people the opportunity to name their world is liberation in action. Can we play the... The clip. This red and blue, I cry to with your lips to the sea, and they cry like waking birds.
Next slide, please. <coughs> so the legacy of Mickey Bean. The men have created something that they're proud of. Um, and they've got constructive proof in DVD form of their time spent in prison. And um, for some of them, it's the first quali qualification, educational qualification they've ever achieved in their lives. Next slide. <coughs> Next slide, Steve. Um, oh, sorry, can we go back one? Uh, a spin-off from Mickey B is the education pack that, w that we've created based on the film. It's designed to engage young people who are switched off from education. It uses drama and film to make the Macbeth story accessible and interactive. It's film-based and uses experiential learning to engage disaffected youth at risk of crime. We seek to unlock the creative potential of these youth by showing the, the prisoners as positive educational role models. Next slide, please. People always ask, how much did it cost to make? Well, it cost £50,000 to make, um, but you can see the costs there. It cost £82,500 a, a year to keep uh, a man in prison. <coughs> in North Carolina, uh, and that's this figure, I checked it because I sent it recently to uh, another conference who, who sent it back to me saying that they couldn't believe it, so I checked it out. Uh, and Sam, who plays, um, uh, who plays Duncan in the film, has been out of prison four years, so to my reckoning that's a, probably a saving of 300 grand about it. Sam's now a taxpayer as well. Uh, next slide please. Um, can we play the documentary? Uh, can I agree on Mickey B's 27 minute documentary? We're going to be showing it later on today between 4.45 and 5.30 as Mary Louise said. Here's just a snippet for those of you who can't make it. Uh, 
Uh, next slide. So how do we do it with a 0.5 post? And uh, ESC has one 0.5 post, and ironically, <laughs> that post is funded by a bank, Lloyd's TSB Foundation. God bless them. <laughs> Yes, you are also blessed by the quality of our volunteers. The cast of Mickey B are slowly making their way back to ESC. Sam, who plays Duncan, is with us as a volunteer. Divi, who plays Mickey B, uh, has just recently is recently on his way out of prison and is a volunteer with us. Um, <coughs> Rab, who plays Duffer, is a volunteer with us, and Liam is a bookie. And we understand Ross. Uh, uh, the guy who plays Ross is coming out to join us as well. So, next slide please. Sam H, um, the Mary Louise has met and he's the guy, the other guy on the, um, on the slide background. I just, I just want to mention Sam because he wasn't in the film but he was involved around it. He would make the tea, he would help us with photocopying, he'd brush the floor, he'd tidy up. He's one of those guys who was always, always there. Sam, is, Sam H is one of our prized volunteers. Uh, Sam is always there, reliable, trustworthy, honest, committed, and dependable. What you see with Sam is what you get. But from, um, Sam served 26 years in prison, 19 years over his tariff, nearly nine of those years in solitary confinement. There's an investment of over two million pounds in Sam, and some people find it hard to believe that Sam volunteers with us three or four days a week. They can't fathom the change in him, the transformation. For us, it's very, very simple. You get more of what you reinforce. Next slide, please. <coughs> Robert Scholl wrote in the foreword to Pedagogy of the Press that there's no such thing as a neutral educational process. Education either functions as an instrument that's used to facilitate the integration of the people into the logic of the present system and bring about conformity to it, or it becomes the practice of freedom, the means by which men and women deal critically and creatively with reality and discover how to participate in the transformation <coughs> of their world. Next slide, please. So, I'd just leave, like to leave you with a question. As arts educators, we need to ask ourselves a very, very simple question. Is our practice about liberating or about domesticating? Thank you.